very concerned about global warming. Is that a hoax in your world? I don't know. I lose sleep over it every night. Yes. Read in the I've details. I've asked you a very basic question, and you haven't answered it. I, asked I didn't. You, no, no, I asked you a question. I said, you said Newsom is a winner. Why do you want so many kids? What's the purpose of living if you don't have kids? Seriously? Yeah. We have to bring the population back down to 3 billion. Do you agree with that strategy? Oh, I'd love it. Has anything about God changed in your life? Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. In this video, we are going to be breaking down the recent Club Random episode where Bill Maher had Patrick Bet David on the show. Now, I've been thinking about this one a lot since it came out about a week ago. What's the narrative here? What was PBD's strategy? And I think I've figured it out albeit quite subjectively. So I wanted to share that and map this conversation out because I believe that Patrick Bet David is a very calculated and interesting man who allows Bill Maher throughout this interview to really show his true colors. So make sure you stick around until the end where I'm gonna tie this all together. So let's get into the first bit where Bill Maher puts his foot in it for the first time in this interview. This girl comes over to the house and I'm half Armenian, half Assyrian. She says, you ought to do an ancestry to see if you have any other you know, nationalities or roots. Wait, you say Assyrian? Assyrian, like Aramaic Assyrian. Well, because the Assyrian Empire is long over. It is. Right, so I, there's I, I, seven of us but, left. But the, but the Assyrians became Iraqis. The mm -hmm. Assyrians became Syrians, mm -hmm. <laughs> hence the name. Yeah. <laughs> Coincidence. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's a rich history. Anyways, I'm, you, you, you Oh, know, I love that history and that part of the world. You know. So I had to point that out there because it's really not a good start here for Bill. Questioning PBD's Assyrian heritage as if his people don't exist anymore. I wouldn't recommend saying that to an Assyrian, but regardless, the Assyrians are a diaspora people that can be traced all the way back to obviously the Assyrian Empire and that have existed as a cultural and ethnic minority in various different empires and nation states. But the irony here, which I found quite funny, is that Bill Maher is Jewish another diaspora people. Only difference is that they now have their own state. Anyways, now onto the part where Bill tries to slam Trump and praise Biden, and PBD makes him double down on his points. People, like, this is the problem we we're having right now with Trump and, and B Biden. Trump, of course, is even more demented and full of dementia. That, and But they're around the same, but Biden, wears it horribly. He he shuffles and he looks fucking old as f dirt. You, you and said Trump, Trump is more dementia than Biden? Yes. You didn't just say that. You said the Trump, really are you like Trump more than Biden? No, no. I mean, you can. In the area of dementia, there's a lot of things you could say. Did you really, did you see what Trump said this weekend? Yeah, the whole thing about Nancy Pelosi yeah, he, and Nikki Haley. And, right. And then he, you know, somehow, some way, Everybody from the media comes down and says, no, 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 that wasn't Nikki Haley who shut down and controlled security. It was Nancy, you know, Pelosi. But to say dementia between the two, I mean, like, look, you know, Biden, you listen to 100 speeches, you know, you can't even, you know, he can't even go through his speeches. Yeah, you know, th this uh, whole subject, I feel like, is kind of the red herring of the election. It, it never engages me that much because, like, I know who Biden is. And I know who Trump is. We both we've both seen them a lot. And yeah, they're both not at their life's peak for them. And it's sort of baked in. And I don't think does it really make me think that it's affecting how Biden makes decisions and runs the country? No, it's not. He doesn't look good running for president. He doesn't look good you know, publicly as president. That's not the important part of being president. The important part of being president is the decisions you make in small rooms where there aren't people around to look at you stutter and where you're not as nervous and where you don't have to make a speech. You can just listen to advisors yeah. and use your wisdom. That's the key part of being and president. you think he does that? Biden, yes, absolutely. You really believe he does that? What do you mean you so, really so, believe? Like, so, like it's, so, like it's like a, like a, 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 I'm a cannibal. Uh, yes, I, re yes, people really believe it. Like half the country thinks he's done a pretty good job. Get, being fair, giving like what you're dealt with as president and where we are. Really, what, what is so like hard to believe, excuse me, about I think Biden did a good job because what, the economy went in the toilet? Uh, because we're like losing a lot of our own troops overseas? No, things are fucking good. Do you think things are good? Oh, Jesus. So, you know, it, Bill, it, that's the part What are you where, worth? Uh, what am I worth? Yeah. I was worth plenty before Biden. Biden didn't do the money well, for What are you worth man. now? Ballpark. A few hundred million dollars. A few hundred million dollars. Yeah. 
But you're bitching things aren't oh, good. Oh, I'm not bitching. This, I'm not, you said I, things aren't good. Well, no, no, I'm not sitting here for me. My life's going to be good no matter who the president is. I'm not sitting here worried about uh, uh, my life. I don't think you're going to, I think you were fine under Trump. I think you're going to be fine under Bush. I think you're going to be fine under Obama. I think you're going to be fine no matter who. So it's, there's going to be a percentage yes. of people, no matter who is president, oh, I they're going to be fine. I take your point. Yeah. The rich always, yes. I, th I think the, the those well. who bring value to the market and they have a niche, they're always going to do well. That's, that's evergreen, right? But at the same time, you know, when you, so what was your niche that brought you that? So Bill redirected the conversation there and really didn't want to get into it. And when I first watched this, I was a little bit frustrated, like Pat, just make your point. Stop asking him if he really thinks what he says. Obviously he does, he says it all the time. But then I thought about it more and I realized that every time anybody does this to Bill and Pat probably knows this, Bill gets really triggered and starts to squirm. And this is because he knows that what he's saying is wrong and disingenuous. Do you think things are good? Oh, Jesus. So, and he also knows that he has been the biggest anti-Trump guy probably in the entire media. And if he were to ever admit that he's wrong, it would do irreparable damage to his reputation. And now let's skip to another part where they get into a little bit more about Trump and Biden. Back to the original, no, Biden's not done a bad job. Why do you think he has? What's so awful? So when Trump was becoming a 2016, when he was going to be president, everybody said World War III is going to get started. Do you trust him with the nuclear button? What if he starts this? What if he starts that? Everybody's like, oh, my God, into the world, war is coming. Everybody was worried about it. This guy's going to be a dictator. That's all mainstream media ever talked about. Um, then he's president, two and a half years, nothing. COVID then happens. Of course, things change. It was a surprise to everybody. Zero war, zero issues. ISIS disappears. Temperature for war is down, economy's doing well, everybody's happy. COVID happens, rather than choosing to, you know, put the onus and the responsibility on China, what do we do? We put it on Trump, Trump's the enemy. Then America gets more and more and more divided. When 9-11 happened, we didn't say it's Bush's fault, we said 9-11, except for Michael Moore. When 9-11 happened, we didn't say it's Bush's fault. 9-11 happened, we said, the enemy's out, America united. So I think we had an opportunity to be united during COVID, I think we missed the mark by picking on that guy. And then it was, you're a Democrat, you're a Republican, I'm supposed to hate you. And then there was division. Then uh, Biden gets elected, and I was like, this guy's gonna be the president of peace. Really? Yeah, okay, cool, let's see. He's gonna be the one that's gonna bring peace. Shambles with Afghanistan. Then you got Ukraine and Russia. Then you got Israel and Hamas. Well, you know, I, okay, I get it. You're on the red team. I'm not, I don't have a team so like that. It's not this. about the red team. It really is because it's like, it's so easy to like pick apart every, Afghanistan. I feel like that's such a bullshit one. Yeah, did they, did they stick the landing? No, they didn't. They did not stick the landing on Afghanistan. I'm, I'm not a million percent sure that it would have gone differently however, who, however they did it, whoever did it. But no, probably somebody could have done it in a more efficient way. Um, what I know is he was the one who had the guts to do it, which needed to be done. Nobody else would rip off the Band-Aid. But it just in general, these, these sort of like- Trump was gonna do it in May and he, he was gonna do it in a different way, uh, you know. So, so let me, maybe let me ask a question well, in a different way with you. Okay, what? but you know, this rosy picture of Trump that you paint, I, I, like again, I don't know why it has to be so red team, blue team. I, I'll give you that the worst things that could have happened under Trump did not, you're right. He did not uh, nuke a, a hurricane as he once proposed or thought about. That alone should be scary enough that he considered it. it. There are good people around him. I'm glad there's good people around him who will convince him that you can't nuke a hurricane. The irony of Bill Maher saying to PBD, oh, I get it, you're on the red team, when he is currently hanging on to the side of a blue sinking ship for dear life doesn't escape me. I'll never let go. I promise. I mean, the people who are on the blue team with half a brain have now come out and just sort of said, okay, I can't with the senile president. My younger sister used to be three years younger than me. Now she's 23 years younger. There's not a single solitary Biden man that is as old, younger than any Biden woman. The homelessness crisis, the wars, the DEI, the open border and the trans stuff. I yield. Maybe the orange man isn't so bad after all. Please just stop taking my money and leave my kids alone. But not Bill. 
He claims to be against marriage, but oh boy, is he married to the Democrats. And now onto the part where they discuss Gavin Newsom some more and how he's just the biggest winner ever. But before we get there, guys, if you don't mind, absolutely smashing that like button below. That would help me out. And if you love this content, if you get value from it, if I make you laugh sometimes, then hit that subscribe button. Back to it. I get it. You don't like Biden. I, you know, I look, I wish it was a different... Do you like Newsom? How do you feel about Newsom? Had him on my show Friday. I saw that. And uh, I, I, first of all, I love him. Just You just like a guy or you don't. I've known him for a long time. He's done my show for a long time. Do, do I love everything he does as the governor of California? No, I don't. I wouldn't say I'm undertaxed. Uh, yeah, it's this. I have issues with this state. He's... I got one reason I want him to run for president. Well, is because he's obviously a winner. This guy could fucking do it. It's insane that we have the guy, but we can't run him because the we have to winner. tiptoe around Biden and the final winner. Well, he would win the election. Oh, so so he would win the election. So he's a talented debater, speaker, communicator, yeah, deflector, and, and politician. And right. he's a smart guy. He's right. he's a smart, real guy with a pair of balls. Do I love everything? No, you never knew do with a politician. But first of all, I think if he ran for president, it'd be great because it would force him to move to the center. Now you're running not just in California. Yeah. I mean, this is California. It's weird. Are, are you are you a are you a uh, are you a results driven guy? No, I like to think, watch things yeah. fall apart. I mean, of course you, you wouldn't build a show that you win, build and win at the levels you won, you know, for decades if you weren't results driven, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're Bill Maher, you know. What, I, what about, what do you mean, what's the point about so results exactly driven? exactly where I'm going with you. So results, so results driven yeah. guy. Right. What areas has Newsom won in? You said he's a winner. Winner of the election. He no, could no. win the election. But based on what, though, do you want results? Like, what has he done? To California to say he's a winner. What? What? Oh uh, God! I don't know. I. It's too. <laughs> Bill, you're a smart. You know guy. what? He what, made it what, rain. Okay, dude. The, it wasn't yeah, raining. Someone said that. He said, "Great uh, job." It wasn't I'm raining, and it. now it's raining. So he's got my vote. <laughs> okay. I, you know what? Respect. I mean, I, he, I, he, he. I don't know. I don't follow the news. That's a, yeah, a character Bill, I play you on do, television. Don't be a flick. It's you're you're a very smart guy. Who, you're a very smart guy. It's a character. I actually live with my delicate wife Sue and our eight homeschooled children. Uh, we just had twins, Sean and Hannity. <laughs> <laughs> Don't believe everything you see on so, TV. So, so then, what this does to me, this actually makes it easier for me to not even have to have this discussion and just move on to other things we can talk about. Is you base your character on <laughs> my, my on, character. on your candidate? You base your candidate based on being a good debater, deflecting, not necessarily results. Because no, I don't. If that's how you do it, then Newsom is fantastic, this is Bill. stupid. You're better than this. Really? I hope so. I don't know. I'm just so, getting annoyed. But, I, you, but question, I, 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 said, I told you are. I, I said, mean, it's a silly argument, a, a debater. You know, I, like, I can't tell. I've been doing uh, political commentary on television for 30 years. I think I can tell. When a, when a guy is just debating or whether make a calculated guess on how he's going to be actually as president. There's two different things, running and being being the guy. Uh, do I like it that Newsom is good at the running part? I do, because that means he can get elected. Do I also think that if he got elected, he would be a good president? I do. Generally moving the country in the right direction, I would like to take him back a little toward the middle, but, you know, Based on what, though? Based on what? Well, you know, California is just a kind of a crazy, you know, uh, can't do can't, the taxes. The, the 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 graft really is what is the. I was asking him about that. Uh, he says they're attacking it. The red tape, the graft, the fact that they can't build a, a fucking homeless home for uh, less than nine hundred thousand dollars. They, they couldn't complete a, a fucking high-speed rail. Uh, I'm going to say on my show Friday, this is going to be controversial, but Hamas, um, let them come over here and build our fucking tunnels because we cannot get it done. Um, so a good pivot there, and I really don't blame Bill because, I mean, he's gone his whole career saying that he's the facts guy, and he is only 
after the truth. And with that in mind, I wouldn't want to talk about why I love Gavin Newsom either. And that is because California is a failed state. And I don't know if Bill Maher leaves his mansion all too often. When he does, it's probably in a limousine or a private jet. But all you have to do is take a walk down downtown Los Angeles, take a cursory glance around you, and you will realize that this is a place that looks like it has been touched by the devil. I've actually been to California twice over the past few weeks. And I love that state. I think it's so beautiful and it just absolutely tears me apart to think about what that place could be if it had a competent leader. But no, it's full of homelessness and drugs and everything's overpriced and everybody's overtaxed and now all the cool people want to leave. And so on to the next part now, which I love because PBD is 100% trying to intentionally trigger Bill here. So you're married for 14 years? 14 years, yeah. 14 kids. We got four kids. We got four kids. If I, I'd have 20 if I could. We got 11. Uh, Why do you want 20 kids? 10, 7, 2. Why do you want so many kids? What's the purpose of living if you don't have kids? Seriously? Yeah. Well, okay. Again, the way you frame it is just off putting because it's like, it's like assuming all of us, and we're so varied as a human race, yeah. that all of us think the same way. So, for many millions and millions of people, the purpose of living is to avoid having children, is to enjoy your life. Now, it's perfectly fine if your choice is to trade your life for someone else's, which is really what, if you're going to be a good parent, you kind of have to do. Um, it's also perfectly okay to say, no, what's wrong is to have a child and then ignore them. <laughs> you know, I don't disagree. No, right. I don't disagree. I don't disagree no, course, with that. No one disagrees with that. No, I don't disagree with that. No, of yeah. course not. But what I'm saying is the harder choices, or I don't think it's a hard choice at all. It should be thrust upon people. It should not be thrust upon people to have children if they really are not suited for that, as it used to be. A woman thought she was a complete failure if she didn't, like, you know, fucking vomit out some spawn to, like, God knows what in the world. Or, um, or and some were, <laughs> and some I'm sure were good people, but generally, like I'm not that in love with the human race. Where I think, like, whoa, what we need is more of them. <laughs> you know. Do you like kids? Do you actually like kids? Or... Why do you ask me this question? For of course, you I don't me like questions kids. about kids. Oh, I'm asking Jesus, you. But I just told you. I, yeah. Okay. No, I fucking hate kids. So Patrick Bet David has this amazing ability to push people right to the edge and then just back off a little bit. He will say something to Bill like, what's the point of living if you don't have kids? Which he knows will cause Bill to go on an unhinged rant and expose his own worldview. And PBD can just sort of sit back and listen. And it's a special kind of worldview as well. It's not just a liberal, hedonistic, solipsistic type worldview. No, it's actually also revoltingly anti-human. And I mean, if you don't participate in the gene pool, then that's a shame in itself. And most men throughout history haven't, by the way. But if you then take it further to say that you hate children, well, that's something along the lines of being somebody who hates human life fundamentally. That's somebody who looks at children and doesn't see the miracle of life. That's not somebody who's moved by the fact that a man and woman can come together in a union and create another human life, shares their genetics, looks like them, and has unlimited potential. He doesn't look at that and see the wonder and awe and just want to give thanks. No, no, no. He looks at that and he hates it. He describes a woman giving birth to her child as vomiting out some spawn. If you ever hear this rhetoric from somebody in your own personal life, I would recommend staying well and truly away from that person because it's probably a very dark individual. And now in this next part, Patrick is going to keep on pushing Bill to reveal even more about his worldview. So keep in mind what we've been discussing as you listen to what Bill is about to say. And listen very carefully to Patrick's line of questioning. See what you think he's trying to really decipher here and then I'll check in after. But I thought a minute about like actually buying something there because I got and am still very concerned about global warming, or is um, is that a hoax in your world? I don't know. I lose sleep over it every night. You what? I lose sleep over it every night. The I warming know, of I the globe. Whether, I don't know whether you're being facetious. Oh my or... God! I, I I shiver every night when I go to sleep. Are you global warming? I assume you're being sarcastic. I would be very serious. Why would I be sarcastic? I mean, global warming is the number one issue in the world. Okay, good. Do you agree with that? I do. Tell me why. See, I think you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 why? Because um, a few what do you years, worry about? A few years ago, someone did a, a um, 
Al Gore? Did, Al Gore, yes. You're right. You're right, David. Um, you know what? It's a big hoax because Al Gore has a big house and he, sometimes he leaves lights on in it. Oh, my God. Um, no, they did, uh, someone did a compendium of all the climate studies. There was over 10, I think it was 10,880 of them, some, some number like that. And there was only two dissenting about the idea that climate change was real and it was happening and it was caused by humans. So that's a consensus. That's what you call a consensus. There's a certain part of me that's going to live life while I'm here. It, look, if, if I thought it was really making a difference to the 8 trillion flights or whatever it is every day that are crisscrossing the globe, you know, make it illegal if it's really, and they're not going to do that. So the point, the bottom line point is that we're going to have to think of something because making humans not act selfishly is just, it's just, it's like, that's what communism tried to do. It tried to make people well, not act case. selfishly. Yeah. And that is never yeah. going, that was never going to work. Humans yeah. are selfish. I think to me, what, what, uh, that, that's the part of what I like about long form podcasts or debates is because the more we talk, if you can reason, you're going to come to a conclusion. And what conclusion do we come here from climate exchange, climate uh, uh, change? Neither one of us are experts in this topic. You're not a scientist. I'm not a scientist. We haven't spent 20, 30 years of our lives thinking the about this. The science isn't the question. People know what the science is. When, you, when, you, when you're debating the science, yeah. it means you just have a weak hand and you want to do what you want to do, and that's fine. But the science is in. There's no debating the science anymore. That was my point about the 10,800 peer-reviewed studies that all came to basically the same conclusion. The science is in on it. Yes, the debate is what do we do about it? Or do we just like, you know, Thelma and Louise it and hold hands and drive off the Grand Canyon and say, you know what, as long as we're gone, so we're gonna go, question. I'm gonna go out strong. Well, let me ask you a question. But I don't wanna be the one to tell India and China who have been watching the rest of the world yeah. pollute forever Oh, you know, now, I'm so sorry, it's a very bad situation. You can't have refrigeration or uh, air conditioning or uh, cars because we used all that up. Sorry, that's not going to happen. They want to, everybody in the world wants to live like Americans. So let me, so if somebody said, I want to, you know, salt, I want to go out there and address the issue of gravity. If I, I want to go out there and gravity, gravity or something that no matter how much time you put into it or resources you put into it, there's certain laws you can't do anything about law of familiarity. Okay. To me, this is my first time here, right? That's sick. Okay. That's a real cool couch. That sign is cool. I went back there and I looked at your uh, engineer room. You have Make America Great Again. You had George Bush toilet paper. You had Barack Obama. You had all this cool stuff. Right. But to me, this is, this is sick, right? Why is this sick to me? It's my first time here. But to you, you probably don't look at everything the same way I look at it, right? Because it's called law of familiarity. Right. Perfect. So now what do we do? Do, do I sit there and judge you and I say, how dare you not be grateful for the amazing things you have around you? How dare you not, you know, be so familiar with your stuff? You ought to be grateful about that couch all the time. Law of familiarity says, I'm not going to change Bill Maher. Bill is going to do what Bill is going to do, right? Okay. So climate change debate, you know, we have a problem. This is what's going on. Fine. 10,800, you know, research, you know, scientists. Great. Let's agree on that. That's exactly what's going on. Now what do we do? So what if scientists come back and say the way for us to save civilization, we have to bring the population back down to 3 billion. Do you agree with that strategy? Oh, I'd love that? it. I'd like to take part in it. You'd like to take part in it, <laughs> Yes, right? there's way too many people. So so you think there's way too many people? Of course. I mean, yes, not to fit, but for resources. See, this is the silly argument that the population expanders like to give. Like, we've got plenty of room. Yes, of course we do. No contest. We've got plenty of room. Did you ever fly over the country? It's mostly empty. Yes, like your head, mostly empty. That's not the issue. We could fit them in. We can't feed them. They all shit. They use water. You can't grow water. There's already a water shortage in this world. There's a water shortage out here before Gavin got in office and made it rain. 
is a goal, right? So it seems clear to me that Pat wasn't interested there in talking about the validity of man-made climate change and the science, etc. Patrick had a specific line of questioning in mind there that led Bill to unravel his own worldview, whereby he reveals that he would be happy to take part in the depopulation of the earth, where billions of people would be wiped off the face of the planet, all in the name of climate change and saving the world. Okay, Bill, need I say it again? Bill Maher hates people. But why would Patrick be doing this, you might ask? Why does it matter if grumpy old man liberal atheist comedian Bill Maher holds these sinister views? He's not in a position of power, he basically just complains for a living. Well, here's why I think. Bill Maher is an elitist. He has a visible contempt for normal people and would be happy to see the population of the earth dwindle. And this is the attitude of so many liberal elitists. This is the climate change cult in Davos. This is the people who are trying to destroy the European farmers at the moment and don't care about the famine that it would cause. Bill Maher's attitude is a microcosm of a much larger issue. The problem of Malthusian atheist liberal elites who would genuinely love to depopulate the earth of useless peasants. And that will use an issue like climate change as a Trojan horse for their agenda. And the reason why this sort of thing is important is because Bill Maher lacks a filter and he just splurges out the things that normally only get said at the elite cocktail parties. And it only gets better from here, but watch what Bill Maher does when PBD tries to circle back to his question about Gavin the Goat Newsom. If, okay. I'm glad you said that, the fact that Democrats like details more. Uh, last year, 2023. Okay, since they like details, let's talk about some details. Oh, Jesus. You say, you say you, you Democrats you know, are more I, about details, right? I, so I, let's, I, I want to give them credit for I can tell this. Is I, can, I can tell this is going to be dumb, but yeah, okay. So it's going to be dumb. When it's uh, details, but, it's dumb. No, it's, it's not, fast. because it's going to be... All right, Tom, maybe I'm misjudging. You're, you're, what, but go ahead, you tell me what your thing is. The Bill Maher show is the greatest show in the world. It's it's dumb. So you don't, uh, I, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? I don't want you to get upset with that. I'd like to see that. this data. Yeah. <laughs> they, no, did say, it, they did say I was the most trusted. The top 50. I think I think you're, you, you, you made a lot of impact last three years. I'm going to continue saying that because I fully believe that. It's not going to change. Uh, whether I'm we not asking for it to change. Yeah. Thank you. I, but, I, but top 50 I states. I take the compliment. Top 50 You're brilliant. <laughs> I mean, if that's what Trump, that would be what, you know. You ready for top 50 states? Top 50 states. Here's top 50 states for net migration. Best state is Florida. Then is Texas. Then is Tennessee. Worst state, 2023. Yeah. California. Absolutely. Then it's New York. Then it's Illinois. Yeah. Why are right. Americans leaving I'll tell blue you why. states and right. going to red states? And again, states? this, what you ask, why yeah. do Republicans and independents watch me now also? Because I'll be honest about answers like this. Because for very good fucking reason, for I know I know people I know this on a personal level, uh, someone who worked for me and really was happy here, but just had a baby and couldn't afford to stay here, mm -hmm. moved to Oregon. Some of it is just that very very expensive this state. Now, part of that is because we try to do too much. They. Democrats are basically the ones that who think government can do things, um, and very often it can't. Shouldn't it's asked to do too much? So you take a state like California, which is completely run by the Democrats, you're going to have that inclination go out of control. Mm -hmm. That's what I think about California. That inclination is out of control. Um, take a lot of their money. I mean, our we went from like a $62 billion surplus to an $87 billion deficit just like in a year and a half. I mean, we're playing with big fucking money. How do you do that? How do you do that? Because it's just about revenues. It was all about revenues. It wasn't didn't have anything to do with Newsom. The tax rate was the same. It's see, you just you seem to just look at like the very last stat on the sheet, like the bottom line one. And it's there's a lot of truth that's Bill, buried asked, in the I've details. I've asked you a very basic question, and you haven't answered it. I, asked I didn't. You, no, no, I asked you a question. I said, you said Newsom is a winner. And I said, based on what? And I said, tell me results, because your show's a winner based on data and based on you, to you, Democrats like details. Okay, detail-driven, your show's killing it because you're getting eyeballs. Give specific okay. victories Newsom's had. What, what is the victory? Is this how you, argue, is this how you argue with your wife? Do no, you argue, do you argue we, with we your... have civil conversations. We enjoy each other's company. 
Okay. And I'm enjoying this. By the way, just so you know this, like this is. So how'd you, meet, is, your, how'd you meet your wife? How'd I meet my wife? I'm not sure if you guys saw this whole thing, but Bill repeatedly accused PBD throughout this interview of being a politician. Just wow. PBD, what victories has Gavin Newsom had? Bill Maher, how did you meet your wife? That was one of the most brazen sidesteps you will ever see. And now onto the last bit, which is the most telling and my favorite by a country mile. <laughs> You did uh, religiously, right? You did that. Religious. Um, religious. How long yeah. ago did you do that? It was. Uh, that was. Uh, we shot it. 20? It, we. It came out in 2008. Okay, so it's been now shit, 16 yeah, years since I you know. Came. Has I anything believe. about God changed in your life? God? Position wise, for God. N uh, no. Uh, God himself is still the same place he was. Uh, and I'm, I think, in the same place. Your in real, engineer in, loves in, you, in, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty much in the same place in relation Nothing's to that. Nothing's changed. Well, what, what would you be like? You think I got religion in the last 60 years? No, no, like, you know, you know when you're by yourself and no one's around. Not, not with people yes, being around. I do. You're by yourself, you no don't. one's around. You have a family. I know exactly what that's like. <laughs> you're the one who yeah. can never sit on a toilet, <laughs> never can sit on a toilet seat that doesn't feel like ass. Okay. So yeah. you're alone by yourself. Yeah, you're, I'm alone. You know, whatever place you are by yeah. yourself. Do you ever sit there and say, you know, Bill, what if you're wrong? What if you're this? Do you go there at all or not at all? Of course not. It's so silly. You mean, what if I'm wrong? So what a great reason to be religious, just in case a uh, devil in hell is going to poke my ass with a pitchfork in mid, amid the burning flames yeah. if I'm wrong. I mean, what God would want you if that was your reason for doing it? Why can't we just be a good person for the sake of it? Um, and other than that, I think life is just about killing time till you die. Have a good time, be a good person, not in that order, be a good person first, but you can manage both. I don't feel like I owe my life to anybody, but I do feel like I've been fortunate. Like. When I look at all the 8 billion people in the world, um, of all the lives I could have pulled, this was a pretty good one, you know? Um, there were things I would have liked. I should have been 6'2", but God fucked up. Um, so, <laughs> you know, basically, if I had to go back into the reincarnation bin and pull another life, I'd be scared to do it because, you know, I, I like this one. I love that Patrick went there with Bill and I would have loved even more to have seen him take it even further. But I think he got what he wanted from this conversation. And so here's my opinion on Bill Maher and the more philosophical takeaway from this video. Bill in his lifetime has acquired more money and material possessions than one could ever know what to do with. He's garnered a level of fame, success and adulation that very few people who ever walk this earth will get to experience. Yet, he is resentful to the core. And he may say that he's happy, but nobody who's truly happy with any level of grace or wisdom will ever hope to depopulate the earth or will actually say that they hate children. You see, like I said, Bill has a lot of stuff, a lot of material stuff that will one day succumb to the elements. He has the adoration of millions of people around the world whose names he will never know. He certainly has the means to just gluttonously fill that void in his soul with instant gratification, which will keep him afloat until he dies. But he's not connected to anything eternal, and I would guess that when his head hits the pillow at night, when he's all alone, if he ever allows himself to go there, then the notion that there has to be more to life would surely whisper in his ear. You see, money and fame is awesome and aspirational, but you ask any sane, successful person that has a loving family, what's more important between the two, and it'll be a no contest. Any respectable parent that I know, my parents included, would lay down their lives for their children without so much as a second thought. And it's my opinion that until you feel that level of love for another human being, where you love somebody more than you love yourself, and you would die for them, or when you have the sort of relationship with God where you love God more than you love the world. You'll never know true joy and you'll never gain a true perspective on the meaning of life. But what's more is that you'll also never gain perspective on your own mortality. You see, Bill Maher's attitude is I'm just going to hit the gas, go at max speed and enjoy the ride until I hit the cliff's edge and then crash, boom, 
bang, and I become worm food. I don't really care what I leave behind because it's all pointless anyway. Whereas Patrick, being a family man and a man of God, has the wisdom and grace to realize that he's part of something much greater than himself. And all of the resources and the things that he's gained are not just merely there for his own indulgence, but rather to play a role in the proliferation of life and the greater good that comes along with that. You see, Patrick loves his sports car too, and he wants to drive fast, but also, wants to pick up some passengers along the way. Wants to explore some roads unknown until the day comes where he can't drive anymore. He hands over the keys and fades into the light with a smile on his face, knowing that his work here is done. And that's the difference between these two men. So looking forward to reading your thoughts, guys. And as usual, you can find me on those links below. You can hit that subscribe button if you get value from this content. And also, if you'd like to watch another video, right here. Till next time, I'm Jake. This is Otto Snake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.